On behalf of the City of Greater Geelong, it is my pleasure to host you today to our wonderful waterfront. And I understand, Ian, that you've got some exciting news for us. Thank you, Councillor. Yeah, look, we're delighted to be able to announce today that uh, our Asian Champions League qualifying match uh, on Saturday the 15th of February is going to be played uh, here in Geelong, this beautiful uh, region of uh, Victoria uh, at, uh, at Cadinia Park. Uh, we're excited on many fronts. We've uh, the victory have uh, been at Geelong previously for a, for a friendly. In fact, uh, Club Ambassador Grant Brebner, who's here today, played in that game. But this game takes it to another level again. Uh, the passport and the result for victory on this night is a ticket into the group stages of the Asian Champions League with the, the winning side playing uh, Guangzhou, the defending champions of the Asian Champions League, 11 days later in China. So we couldn't be more delighted that uh, the pathway for that is, is clear now. Uh, we're delighted to have had such a wonderful reception from everybody in Geelong, everyone involved with the stadium, uh, including Brian Cook at the Geelong Football Club. Yep. And uh, we know that we've got a strong support for football in this region and a strong support for victory. And we're looking for a big crowd on the night, uh, a crowd that will get right behind the team. Yep. And, uh, and obviously a victory for victory is the ambition. So thank you and we're delighted to be able to confirm today that we're coming to Geelong. Well, Ian, what sort of crowd are you expecting? Well, I, I think we'd, we'd like to... Uh, yeah, we've really settled on a crowd... Um, in Melbourne now that uh, is, hovers around the 20,000. It was a little bit less than that on Tuesday night in what was extreme heat and with uh, 2020 uh, Big Bash uh, on at Crosstown and obviously the tennis. So look, if we could get 15,000 plus, I think we'd, we'd, it would be a great result. Um, it's obviously, it's a Saturday night. We're not uh, asking people to make sacrifices in the middle of the week. We uh, are going to have some great ticket incentives for our members. There's a 20% discount on offer to our members who want to come down. But more fundamentally, we know there's a great uh, supporter base for football in Geelong and a lot of people travel up to watch uh, Victory play and uh, we're looking forward to uh, you know, delivering a literally a world-class event here. Tommy Rogic be part of that spot <laughs> in a month's time? Uh, who knows but uh, what we will say is as any club I'm sure would say is that any opportunity we have to improve our squad is something that we'll uh, readily explore and uh, Tom is, a, is a, a fine young man who uh, has a little bit of a perplexing challenge at the moment. Um, we could well be the solution, but uh, we'll see how that plays out. It's very much in Celtic's hands at the moment. And there's been a little bit of start to talk about that? Oh, it would be folly to say we haven't had any contact with, with them, but uh, equally, we're very respectful of the fact that Tommy's under contract. Uh, and uh, you know, I think in that context, uh, we're simply now expressing our ambition as a football club that uh, we think there could be a right fit here, but uh, there's a lot of things have to fall into place. But in terms of expressing ambition, and in terms of Melbourne victory, always looking for ways to improve our squad. That's a conversation, of course, we'd want to be involved in. Well, Mark, will this game come a bit too soon for you with the, the current injury? Um, yeah, it's uh, it's not too far away. I mean, at the moment, I'm just uh, very, very focused on the next few days, just trying to do all the things right, and then um, we'll get a better indication sort of after the first week of exactly how long it'll be till I can get back onto the pitch. You got sort of a, a rough idea at the moment when you could be back? Yeah, well, I mean, straight after surgery, obviously speaking to the surgeon, realistically he was talking four, four to six uh, before playing without any issues. And, and obviously once I've decided, to, uh, myself and the club, doctors and the club have decided to have it done, I don't want to sort of undo all the work that's been done by rushing it back too quickly. Um, obviously our medical staff are very good and uh, I'm sure they'll have me back as quick as possible. Just take us through the decision making process because we saw you training on Monday, you looked like you were training pretty well and then you know, less than 24 hours later you're in having the surgery. Yeah obviously it's been something that I've been dealing with for quite a while since about full on since about June last year, July last year so uh, we had scans before the season and um, the surgeon actually saw the scans then as well and we all decided that it was something that we we're going to try and manage. Uh, I had scans again on Monday after training and um, it had deteriorated enough for him to decide that um, it was definitely sort of the right time to have it done. So I was sort of started heading on a little bit of a downhill slope with it. Um, it was taking me a little bit longer and to recover after games and uh, obviously you know once you sort of start missing early on in the week especially for me it becomes quite difficult to to properly prepare for weekends so that was uh yeah once we saw the surgeon on monday that was the the thoughts behind it all and and uh, i was very lucky that he was able to do it the very next morning 
given it's a World Cup year as well, was that sort of playing on your mind a little bit as well? Oh well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, not only that, we, we discussed that if it wasn't to be done now and we tried to manage it for a few more weeks, if, if something was to go wrong, we we're, we're heading into finals time as well, which was um, uh, another major factor in it all. And then obviously after that, uh, you know, you want to be playing football leading into the finals and through the finals because of the World Cup. So, um, you know, there was a number of things that, that we had to look at and, and talk to. Uh, talk about so um, yeah obviously that was a, was a major factor but there were many other things as well. As we were talking to Ian before obviously a lot of interest from Australian clubs in Tommy Rogic obviously he would be a great signing if you could get him across the line. Yeah absolutely um, Tommy's an unbelievable player uh, I think any club that picked him up would be very very lucky to to do so I mean uh, you know obviously Tommy has ambitions uh, with the World Cup and, and wants to be playing regular football and whoever's lucky enough to get that signature, I think, will be um, yeah, very fortunate. Just give us an idea how important Champions League is for, for a club, like any club in Australia, but to, to make sure you do qualify for this tournament. Yeah, I, I think it's a massive coup for the club. I mean, I've played in it with, with Sydney many, many years ago and I've also played in it with uh, Shanghai Shenhua and it's... Um, so it's not only an incredible experience, I think it's uh, for the players to develop. Um, it's a, it's a great, great tool for that. It's, uh, the standard is, is very, very high and I know all the Asian countries are extremely passionate about playing in it. Um, both China and in Japan, uh, it was you know, a, a focal point of, of the clubs to, to be involved in such a prestigious tournament. For, and for us to go in, into, into it as well, I think will be the same. I think um, the learning curve for the players and the club will be massive and it's uh, definitely something we want to aim for to do regularly. And just on Mitch, I mean, it's a bit of a tough situation for Mitch at the moment. You've had a chat to him, it's obviously a bit of an unsettling time for him. Um, yeah, I mean, Mitch is, Mitch is a professional footballer. He has been for some years. Uh, I think around the change rooms and, and on the pitch, he, he has conducted himself as, as best as possible. Obviously, it's something that's between, between the clubs at the moment. There's only so much that Mitch can do as a player anyway. So um, uh, his focus has just been on, on training daily and, and getting through games on the weekend and doing, doing what's right for his club. Great memories of playing in Geelong last time? Yeah, look, it was, uh, it was a few years ago now, but... Um, it was it was just really just to bring the game down here. We had we had always we're always known that there's a lot of Geelong fans travel up to Melbourne, and it was a case of just bringing the game down here, and and it was a fantastic day. Um, I can't actually remember who it was against, but uh, the fans turned out, and it was a good occasion for the club. Are you looking forward to having a kick again? Um, I'm a looking forward to having a kick. No, no, the days are well and truly behind me, Julian, and uh, I enjoy just working with the club. It's a fantastic club. It's a great opportunity. You know, they brought me out here, and they they, they still like to look after their ex players, and um, yeah, it's just great to still be involved. And looking forward to coming down here and seeing the game. So. And spectator wise, obviously, free ground other than you know the rectangle size. So. Yeah, well, again, we've, we've, we've dealt with these sort of things in the past and it's never been a problem. I think we've been over to Aurora and played uh, pre-season games over there, but I think, I think there's talk of bringing the, the ground, well, the pitch a little bit closer to one of the sides of the stands. So, yeah, it won't be a problem. I'm sure the atmosphere will be great. A great win for the boys the other night. Was it seven players under 21 in that game? That must give you a lot of hope, and, and particularly with some of the players you, you can get back in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, and, and uh, I haven't spoke to Muskie about it. You know, in terms of I saw him earlier on in the day, and and he wasn't really concerned about it. And and I know a lot of people were talking it up. You know, with the players missing, but but sometimes bringing that youthfulness in. You know, not all the time, but in and out the, the team. They all know each other. They all pulled for each other, which was evident to see. And um, maybe it just took one eye off the Western Sydney. Japanese Wanderers really focusing on that game thinking it might have been a little bit easier but uh, they definitely performed very well.